Static and you're tuned into Static Sessions once again. I'm sure you guys have been keeping up to this point, what's been going on. If you haven't, please subscribe, like, comment on past videos, and definitely set yourself up for alerts as we're gonna be going very in depth with everything that we do right now. In our last video, what we were doing, we were um, cleaning up the audio that Deep Johnny recorded and uh, getting it ready prepped for mixing. And now what I wanna quickly get into is a uh, another step that people don't take very often. And it happens with people who uh, when you're recording vocals, sometimes uh, the vocals aren't perfectly aligned. You can hear the left and rights or the ad libs or all that stuff when they're supposed to be in time with the vocal. Sometimes they're out of time because not everyone can be perfectly in time. So what I'm trying to do is explain to you two ways of doing it. One way is manually, which is uh, a little bit of time consuming, but we're going to go into that one first. And then after that, we're going to be going to a very simple way of doing it, which is vocal line. And Vocaline is a VST plugin, works much better on Pro Tools, but I have it as like an AU that works in Ableton, and I find it to work pretty simply as well. So I'll show you guys some techniques with that as well, which is much easier to do. Um, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to do some manual alignment. And um, for the recording that we did, we only did doubles on the uh, hook part of the song. So I'm going to show you guys how to go in depth into that and get them aligned. So we'll turn over right into Ableton and um, just looking at the vocal. You can see that it's kind of, you know, pretty damn good. It's pretty here, like in line. Um, I'm gonna press play that you guys hear it. And once you guys hear it, you'll hear some things that are out of line and then we'll fix those manually. So. I'll play that again for you guys. B was playing in the back. So in that, there was some, uh, you know, first off, there was like this thump that was in the bottom of the song. I just want to get rid of it because I don't want to hear it. So we'll quickly put some EQ on this thing. So uh, he did sing it with different tonality. So you can manually fix this up. So what I did was just create a little chop right there, go into this part of the song. If I want it to be lined up a little bit, I can see that his double takes are a little bit past his uh, main take, so a little bit better. And uh, I want to make this left and right so I can hear the different. So I can hear on the sadde, this um, comes in a little bit late compared to the main vocal. So what we'll do is move that in a little bit, you know, make it sound a little bit better, create some fades over here. And all this is doing is, uh, you know, making it sound more in time. Fades are really important during this because um, once you're exporting the vocals ever and giving them away to companies or labels, um, and there's got like glitches and pops and stuff in it, no one really likes that. So definitely take your time, put some fades in this thing. <laughs> you notice on this one, he um, went, he didn't do a full take on this one and he did a full take on this one. We were a little in a little bit of a rush. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I have a, another vocal recording that we use for this. So I'm gonna take this part that we did in the other vocal recording, I'm gonna put it into this one and then kind of have it lined up and I'll go into that section right here. So I did another vocal recording with him before, but definitely do multiple takes. You don't ever want to get stuck with one take and you never know when you're going to get a hold of the singer again. Any of that stuff. Always do as many takes as possible. It just works out for everyone a lot easier. Um, so I just want to make sure it lined up. So, so if you can hear that, I can... One second. Oh. So I got to get that part of the vocal. One second, I took the long part. So I want to take this part right here. This is what I want, and it goes. I'm playing only one part of the vocal for you guys. I'm sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure it was good. 
So now we're gonna go into this, and I know I want this part right here. Where I go. So I'm gonna put that in, and it should be somewhat lined up. There you go. Move that over a bit. I can see just by looking at it, this one's kind of out of line. And um, we don't need this focal right here. Now, for the most part, this is pretty lined up. It looks, uh, it sounds pretty good. It sounds natural. It sounds like he did three takes or, yeah, three takes of the, of the uh, course, which I think is great. And I love the realness of it. I think it sounds really cool. But if you're going for a thicker um, inline type of vocal where you can't really hear the sides, but you hear this phantom left and right come in, then there's a really cool way of doing this. And uh, it does take some time. And this is actually a really good vocal to do it for because as you can tell here, he does this little bit of an extension here where he keeps these ones short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a vocal line and I'm gonna show you guys what's the best way to make this happen. Um, so, vocal line itself is very, very simple. You bring up uh, vocal line, and that's why I love Ableton. Really quickly, you can get into it. Just find a plugin that you want. So what you want to do is you're going to drop vocal line on the vocal that you want to align to the original. So we're going to put it on the left vocal. Simple enough. Put these back into the center. For some reason, it doesn't like hearing a vocal from the left. And, um, or the right, I forgot which one actually. And what you're gonna do is, there's a little bit of a setting up to make this happen, but it's really simple. So if we know this is the vocal that we want the double to align to, what we're gonna do is set up this vocal to route to this vocal down here. So what we want is um, vocal number six to line up to vocal number eight. So we're gonna go into it, click on vocal number eight, and then where it says track in, you'll now see 3-4 vocal line pro audio or pro AU. Um, if you didn't have vocal line on this track, this would not show up, which I can show you right now. Really simply, if I get rid of it, this disappears. So what we need to do when we drop it back in, see how this lights up back up again? Click on 3-4 vocal line, call it a day. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is because I wanna keep these parts and I don't want them to get affected by vocal line. I'm just gonna open up a new track. I'm gonna drop this down here. <clears throat> then I'm gonna open up another new track and I'm gonna drop this down here because I don't want these to get affected by a vocal line. I only want this vocal that's up here to get affected. So now we're gonna be working on this channel only. Um, as soon as you hit capture audio, if you want to zoom in a little bit, zoom in so you know where you're starting from. I'm gonna zoom out so I know where I'm ending. Hit play. <laughs> That's it. So now you've got, um, see in this section right here, I got too much of the audio. So I want to cut that piece out. I don't want that to be involved in the audio. Now that I have this <coughs> align, uh, sorry, now that I have this recorded into a vocal line, all I'm going to do is you can do this whole analyze the line and edit. You don't need to just hit edit. It's aligned. Call it a day. Now that I know this is aligned, because um, I'm working on this track, and I know nothing else is on this layer, I'm actually gonna do this piece of the audio too. So now I wanna do this other half of the audio. Now for this other half of the audio, again, um, I don't want anything like this to be affected. And because I don't have this routed to the number eight audio, which I want to align, what I'm gonna do is just grab this, put it into the same layer where I'm routing vocal line anyways, kind of easy to do. Click on the track or highlight the region. Hit capture audio once again. That's now done. Click on edit. And now that's aligned as well. Now these two are aligned and because I know nothing else is on this layer, I can go ahead, hit save, right click, and what we want to do is freeze and flatten the track. Now what this is going to do, it's going to replace the audio. So freeze 
is going to freeze what plugins are on there and you know have it in place and then what flatten is going to do really simply is replace the audio with the flattened audio now if you notice in the bottom corner i also have autotune on this most likely you don't want to freeze and flatten autotune you probably want to take that off and put it on afterwards for me i know i'm going to leave it like this i'm probably not going to change it so i'm going to leave it on there and once this is done you know freezing because it does take a second it's reading all the entire track so it's going to make sure it's done fully then you hit flatten and boom now it's aligned now if we listen to just this and the main audio you'll hear sorry from here sorry gotta send this back out to the master so you notice only the, the only part that was left on its own was this and that's because we're gonna have to align those separately or manually because he did he doubles a little bit differently which is fine so now what we're gonna do is take vocal line and throw it on the other track and duplicate the exact same process. So I'm gonna quickly do that and I'm gonna show you guys what the final sounds like. So I've vocal lined both of them, uh, both the left side and the right side. So what we'll do right now is go in, take those to the left, take these to the right. As you can tell, these have been flattened because they turned up as stereo layers and these two are um, still the raw audio. So if these guys sound out of place, I'll put those in place afterwards, but for now you can hear what the other audio sounds like, uh, what it sounds like together, all vocal line. And as you can tell, all that is now aligned. Now the only thing that wasn't aligned to me was where he says jut. And uh, I'm going to go in and put that in place right now. And this should be pretty much good to go. A little minor change, good to go. So now that everything's been vocal lined and aligned properly, whether it's manually with vocal line, a mixture of a little bit of both, we're going to go into taking a listen to it. And instead of being a full out left and right double where the timing's not aligned and you can fully hear the left and right on both sides, this should sound a lot tighter. And when it gets into the chorus, it'll just sound like it fills up a little bit on the left and right, which is always a great thing to hear. For me, I love those kind of left and rights uh, or doubles. Uh, sometimes, you know, the other ones sound great too, but me personally, I'm a big fan of this. So let's take a listen from going in from one vocal to opening up into the chorus. So that is how you do vocal lining for vocals, both manually aligning and vocal lining using that tool. I think it's a beautiful tool, a great way to get your left and right sounding like one cohesive piece. And um, if you guys think you loved it or learned something from it, please comment. Let me know what you guys felt, um, good or bad. I love it. Like as much as you can and uh, subscribe definitely to this channel. Also, if you want to get future notifications, please hit that little bell. And um, if there's anything that you feel like I'm missing or things you want to learn based on what I've been teaching so far, please leave some notes in the uh, comment section. I'm always open to teaching a little bit more. If you guys want to go a little bit more in depth, whatever the case may be, let's keep this whole entire series going. Mm -hmm.